Hi, I'm Russ Baker. Let's talk about graphs of rational functions. They have several important characteristics that we need to discuss. But first, let's decide what a rational function is. A rational function is a function of the form p of x over q of x. So it's a fraction where p and q are polynomials. Now we know from discussion of fractions before that q of x, if it's 0, will make the function f undefined. When that occurs, we have an example of our first important characteristic, the vertical asymptote. An asymptote is a line which a graph approaches but never crosses. If we're given a function f of x, which is p of x over q of x, as defined for a rational function, and it is in lowest terms, we say that f of x has a vertical asymptote at a straight line, vertical line, x equals c, if q of c equals 0. That is, the value of x that makes the denominator 0 becomes the value we substitute into the equation for a vertical line. Let's see how that works with a specific example. Here we have f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 divided by 2x squared minus x minus 10. We're going to factor the denominator to find out just when it becomes 0. x squared minus 2x minus 3 in the numerator. And the denominator will factor into x plus 2 and 2x minus 5. That will lead us to two equations of vertical asymptotes, x equals negative 2 or x equals 5 halves. The graph of f of x may never cross those two vertical lines. A second important characteristic is the horizontal asymptote. There are three conditions which we must study in order to understand horizontal asymptotes. The horizontal asymptote might be the x-axis. We can tell that by looking at the degrees of the numerator and denominator. If the degree of p is smaller than the degree of q, then the horizontal x asymptote is the x-axis of the line y equals 0. There is no horizontal asymptote if the degree of p is larger than the degree of q. The line y equals c will become the horizontal asymptote if the degrees of the numerator and denominator are the same. c is the ratio of the leading coefficients of p and q. Let's take a look at our previous problem to get an idea how that works. Here's our problem again. f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3, 2x squared minus x minus 10. We see that the, the degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is 2. Since the degrees are the same, we look at the leading coefficients. This leading coefficient is 2. This one is 1. Our horizontal asymptote, then, has an equation y equals 1 half. Let's take a look at another example. Here's f of x equals x squared plus 2x over 2x minus 1. The degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is 1. Since the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote on the graph of this function. We can also have a third kind of asymptote called an oblique asymptote. An oblique asymptote exists only if the degree of p, remember that's where the numerator is, is equal to one more than the degree of q. We can find the equation by performing long division and omitting 
the remainder. Let's take a look at an example to see how we can make that work. Here again is a, a problem we just looked at. f of x equals x squared plus 2x over 2x minus 1. We see that the degree of the numerator, 2, is exactly one more than the degree of the denominator, 1. So we're going to perform a long division. We're going to divide x squared plus 2x by 2x minus 1. So as we perform this, we say 2x into x squared, 1 half x. That's our first term. Multiply, and we get x squared minus 1 half x. We're going to subtract, and we get 5 halves x plus 0. This must be 5 halves. 5 halves times 2. I'm sorry, that's 5 fourths. That would be 5 halves x minus 5 fourths. That would be the remainder which we are going to omit. The equation of our oblique asymptote, then, is our quotient y equals 1 half x plus 5 fourths. Even though a graph may never cross its vertical asymptotes, it may sometimes cross an oblique or horizontal asymptote. And it crosses it and then will approach it in a later fashion. Let's take a look at how we can tell whether that happens or not. If a function f of x crosses its horizontal or oblique asymptotes, we should set the original function equal to the equation of the asymptote. Let's do that with the function that we just finished and see if, indeed, the graph of that function crosses its oblique asymptote. Here's our problem. We've taken the original f of x, x squared plus 2x over 2x minus 1, and we set it equal to the equation we just derived of the oblique asymptote, 1 half x plus 5 fourths. First thing we'd like to do is multiply both sides by 4. 4x squared plus 8x over 2x minus 1 gives us 2x plus 5. Now the fractions are gone on the right side. Now let's multiply both sides by 2x minus 1. 4x squared plus 8x equals 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 1. We'll multiply out those two binomials. And that will leave us with 4x squared plus 8x minus 5. If we subtract 4x squared from both sides, we'll have 8x equals 8x minus 5. And I think you'll be able to see what's going to happen. If we subtract 8x from both sides, we get 0 equals negative 5. Well, 0 is not equal to negative 5. So in this particular case, we know that there is no intersection. We do not cross the oblique asymptote anywhere at all. The examples we've been looking at so far suggest that our rational functions have been simplified to lowest terms. What would happen if they were not in lowest terms to begin with? Let's take a look at an example of what happens when that occurs. Here's a function that needs to be simplified. f of x equals x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. We can factor our numerator and get x plus 3, x minus 3 over x plus 3. And then we see that 
we can strike the x plus 3s, and we'll be left with, let's call it a new function, g of x, our simplified function of x minus 3. The problem comes in comparing f and g. We know that by looking at f, one of the things that occurs is that x cannot equal negative 3. That might lead us to think that there was a vertical asymptote. But when we simplify the equation, we find that there is no restriction here. When a function is not in lowest terms, we say, that there is a hole at that point in the function. When does a hole occur? The graph of a rational function could contain a hole if the rational function is not in lowest terms. The coordinates of the hole would be x equals the root from the common factor and y, the simplified function, evaluated at x. Let's take a look at the function that we've been working with on the graphing calculator and see if we can find out what this coordinates of the hole might be for this problem. I've already entered the equations of our f, x squared minus 9 divided by x plus 3, and the simplified function, x minus 3, into the y equals menu. The graphs will not show us the whole. We cannot see them by looking at the graphs themselves. What we can do, however, is look at the tables. I set this table to start at negative 6 and show you that, oh, the y values are the same. The y values are the same. They appear to be the same every place, but for x equals negative 3. We know that at x equals negative 3, the y value does not occur, it makes the function undefined, so our graphing calculator gives us an error there. However, a simplified function is evaluated there at negative 6. Consequently, we know that the coordinates of the whole in this graph are negative 3, negative 6. Other important characteristics of a rational function include the x and y intercepts. Recall that a y-intercept is found by substituting 0 in for x, and that a x-intercept is found by substituting y equals 0. Now here's a problem for you to try. Find the equations of the asymptotes of this function, f of x equals 3x divided by the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 2. This function is already in lowest terms. Here are some reminders about finding asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator is equal to zero, and the existence of horizontal or oblique asymptotes depend on the degrees of the numerator and denominator. Turn off the tape to do your work, and then back on again when you would like to see what the solutions are. How'd you do? Did you find vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, oblique asymptotes? Let's consider this problem and see how you did. Vertical asymptotes. We know that vertical asymptotes occur when the denominators go to zero. We have two factors, therefore x equals negative 1 and x equals 2 will be equations of two vertical asymptotes. We can check for a horizontal asymptote by checking for the degree. The degree of the numerator is 1. The degree of the denominator, if we multiply that out, would, there would be an x squared. So its degree is 2. If the denominator's degree is larger than the numerator's degree, then the x-axis is the asymptote. y equals 0. Is there an oblique asymptote? In order for there to be an oblique asymptote, the degree of the numerator would have to be one larger than the denominator. That's not so, so there is not an oblique asymptote. Let's go ahead now and graph so you can get an idea of what a quick sketch of a function would look like 
in how vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes affect a graph. In order to do that, we'll start by plotting the vertical asymptotes. x equals negative 1 is an asymptote, and so we will do that. x equals negative 1, and x equals 2 is an asymptote, a vertical asymptote x equals 2. We know that the graph cannot cross those two dotted lines. We also know that the horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 0. And so our graph may or may not cross the horizontal asymptote. Well, that doesn't tell us much about what our function looks like, so let's try to find some points. The most easily found points are, as always, the intercepts. In this case, what we find out is that by substituting 0 in for x, we will find out that since there's an x in the numerator, if we substitute 0 there, the entire function goes to 0. 0, 0, then, is not only an x-intercept, but a y-intercept as well. Let's plot that point. That's still not a lot of information, is it? So when this happens, you'll want to plot enough points so that you have an idea of where the graph is going to go. Let's plot a few. Let's find out what the function evaluated at 1 is. We'll find that that's negative 1.5. Here's 1, and here's negative 1.5. So we know that the graph must be decreasing here. If you plot a few more points, you'll find that the graph will look like this. As a graph gets closer and closer to its asymptote, it tends to go to infinity, either in positive infinity or negative infinity. We still need to know what happens outside of these areas. If we go out to 3 and we find f of 3, we'll find that that's 2.25. 3 and 1, 2. Now recall that we said that the horizontal axis is an asymptote. And so if we plotted a few more points, we'd find that the graph approaches infinity as it gets closer and closer to 2. And then it will slant down and get closer and closer to the x-axis, but never cross it on that side. We still need to know what happens over here. f of negative 2 is equal to negative 1.5. Negative 2 and negative 1.5. Here again, we know that the graph cannot cross the x-axis, and it will get smaller and smaller as it approaches x. You may want to plot several more points to find out what's happening there. But here is what the graph looked like. And there it will graph and approach a line x equals negative 1. Had we had a hole in this particular function, instead of going to infinity, the graph would simply have gone to an open hole and kept going. It does not distort the graph in any way. You've seen in this section several important characteristics of rational functions. Let's review. The steps to graphing a rational function are to first check for holes by making sure that the function is in lowest terms. Then check for vertical asymptotes, horizontal and oblique asymptotes. To plot some points, you'll want to find any y and x intercepts. Check to see if the function crosses a horizontal or oblique asymptote as well. Plot as many other points as you need to draw and label your graph. Create your own problems and use your graphing calculator to test if you are correct in analyzing your own graphs. Do this regularly until you are particularly familiar and have 
much expertise in your ability to decide what, whether a function has asymptotes or not.